I know you guys tried to do it last night with a combination of blitzes or just contain on the front, but how can you generate a better pre pass rush as a defense, especially to complement, like you guys were stopping the run fairly well last night and a lot of your game plan was working, but how can you get to the passer and get to the quarterback so that you can disrupt them and not let that happen? Um, yeah, I think overall it's just dialing in on your 111th, uh, in the game plan, whatever plays called, uh, making sure the front end's working with the back end, um, us covering long enough, or if I'm blitzing, us uh, getting to the passer quick enough, um, not allowing him to be able to see his third or fourth progression, um, and then being able to work together when you are rushing uh, with your other guys that are in the rush as well to make sure that you're getting the right uh, rush plan down, the right game plan uh, rushed in for that given week uh, to make sure that you get to the spot or set up the other guy next to you to be able to get to quarterback in time. Blake, in a way, were the Browns like the perfect appetizer for the Ravens? It seems like, you know, I think they're one in three in the NFL and rushing yards. Like can some of the game plan that you had to stop the run against the Browns carry over to the Ravens or no? Uh, I mean, definitely. I think every week we have a certain kind of uh, understanding for a team, what they, what they're really good at, um, what their strengths are. Um, and for us as a defense, we always pride ourselves on being able to stop the run. Um, and then we've gotten better at it uh, each and every week. Um, but I think it more comes back to uh, kind of the cliche thing of it comes back to us, us doing our, our job on every single play, being in the right gap, um, leveraging the formations, understanding the offensive formations to be able to stop the play. And um, I'll always give us the upper hand if we're uh, in those situations and we're in the right spots. How hard is it to be a line? We probably won't talk to you again the rest of the week. So how hard is it? to be a linebacker against Lamar Jackson? Oh, yeah. He's one of those special guys, and I think uh, everyone knows it. Uh, I kind of got a taste of it uh, early before he was the MVP Lamar Jackson. We played him in the preseason last year, um, and he was spinning, doing crazy stuff, jumping over people, and we are like, wait, hold up. Who is this guy? Um, and started, obviously, had his amazing season after that. Um, so it's one of those things you obviously, as a competitor, for me, you want to go against guys like that. Um, but it just adds the extra heightened awareness to make sure you're extremely perfect in all fundamental aspects of your game going into that. And then one more, if I can, just big picture here, Blake. I mean, you guys were right in the thick of the playoffs, you controlled your own destiny two weeks ago, and now you've lost to the you know, last two teams, playoff caliber teams. What has that shown you? Like maybe was this team maybe two weeks ago was a little ahead of schedule and now – realize maybe the better teams you know is are a struggle for you guys where do you look at this no I think every single week um we know we can hang with anyone I think uh each and every week we go back to the film and look look at it and are super critical of it um and it came down to winning in the key situations third down red zone uh for us as a, a defense um and it was little things that we went over um and practice did in practice and we just uh, weren't in the right spots or covering the right people. And we just kind of had our own little mental mistakes uh, going into those situations and gave up easy points. Hey, Blake. Um, when, when, uh, when Joe Judge says after the game that, you know, we weren't going to win that game kicking field goals, you can almost take that two way. you can, two ways. You can say he had ultimate faith in his defense that if they don't, if they gamble and don't, you guys can hold them back there inside, deep in uh, inside Cleveland territory. Or you can say, look, the Browns scored 40 points in each of the last two games. He didn't think you guys could hold them down, so he knew he needed a lot of points. Which way did you look at it? Uh, no, I think I looked at it the way um, of you have three uh, kind of – groups that go out there, special teams, offense, defense. And I think it's the complimentary football. Um, he trusted in our complimentary football uh, to go out there, um, execute, whether it was them going and getting that fourth down um, and end up scoring, or if it didn't happen, all of a sudden our defense would go out there. Um, we would do what we needed to do. And then obviously our punt return 
um, once it was led to that, would do what they do to all of a sudden give us uh, that field position advantage um, across the game. Um, and I think that's the type of coach that you want, um, the t same type of mindset that you want going into a game. And we just didn't execute completely uh, across those three facets of the game. I don't know how honest you can be on this or, or you know, if there is an honest, it's a, it's a conjecture. If I asked you a few days ago, I guarantee it, you can hold the Browns to 20 points. Take it or leave it. What would you have said? Um, I mean, me as a defense uh, a person, I don't want them scoring any points. Um, but, no, I feel uh, that's something you go into a game and you want to hold them as minimal as possible. Um, but, yeah, every team makes plays and has those moments. Um, I'd rather you tell me you hold them to 20 points and we score 21 points. Um, I'm I'll not telling you that. No. <laughs> you, only, you, only, you don't get that. You get 20 points, take it or leave it, that's it. That's it. No, uh, I feel like I need more information on that one. <laughs> not getting it. Okay, thank Please. you. <laughs> we'll take one more, Jordan. Hey, Blake, tonight uh, they announced the Pro Bowlers, right? What do you think your chances are? I mean, that's a really tough position in the NFC. You, you've seen that before. You know, Bobby Wagner, Fred Warner, uh, Jalen Smith, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting, Devin White. I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys there. What do you think are your chances, and how disappointing would you be if you don't make it tonight? Oh, no, I mean, every single year you have uh, individual goals for yourself. Um Obviously, especially as a player in the NFL, um, at my position, any position, you want to pro bowl, all pro. Um, for me, lead the league in tackles, all these types of things. Um, so it's just one of those things that if it happens, it happens. If not, it just adds the extra chip on my shoulder to, to keep going at it each and every day to get better, um, to be able to get to that position uh, for next year. How gratifying would it be, though? It sort of is that validation, like you said, that, okay, you know, everyone, I know I'm doing it, but everyone else that is, is actually noticing. No, yeah, I feel like every single moment you, you kind of have that uh, want to have someone kind of have that uh, praise, I guess, um, and recognition for yourself. Um, but the day came, comes down to myself. As long as I know I'm, I'm playing the way I want to play um, at a high level, um, that's really all that matters for me.